going through your mind after uh, losing the game finally to King and the three-year reign is over? Your team has achieved a great deal. Well, you know, like we was discussing in the dressing room, you know, when you got a good thing going for you, you know it's not going to last forever. And uh, we knew it was going to end. We didn't, you know, we was glad that it didn't end, you know, like in the regional or, uh, you know, in the section and it ended up here. And uh, we are very happy about it. We're very pleased to uh, have been part of your three-year run and continued success to you and your program. Uh, thank you very much. Benny Lewis from East St. Louis Lincoln, thank you very much for being with us. Stepping in now is the head coach at Quincy, and I know this is a special moment for Jerry Leggett because this is the last game that he will coach at Quincy High School, and I have to ask you as a reporter what yeah. your feelings are about that. Well, I, I, I have emotions, yeah, strong emotions about it, you know, uh, but there's been several instances when it could have been my last game. You know, it might have been my last game in the regional. And it might have been my last game. I wouldn't have known in the sectional or the super sectional. You wouldn't have known to the last second, the last minute. Here, I knew way ahead of time. I know exactly when my last game is, and, and therefore the emotions started to build up a little bit. What did you tell your young men before you well, came out here tonight? I told them, you know, that they, they played with pride. They represented me and their community and their parents, relatives, and everything, their friends with a lot of pride, and, and just do the same thing one more time. Represent us all with all the pride. And, and I did mention I'd like for them to win one more. <laughs> I'd like to really talk just a moment about that terribly unfortunate yeah. injury to Todd Wen Wenhamer. Uh, that was uh, something that happens in basketball. Oh, yeah. Anzo Martin's been injured, too, but he couldn't come back in the game. You were on a roll. What was going on at the, the bench with Quincy then? Well, we were ahead in the ball game and playing very well, and, and he is the main cog in our little machine. You know how we have to play with a lot of organization, and we depend on everything uh, clicking together just right every time down the floor. And we bring the ball off the floor, and when Todd got injured, the machine changed, I'm afraid. And But he was under the best care possible with the Illinois trainers, and uh, I don't think he'll play much tonight. Final question for you, Coach. Yep. Uh, what's next for Jerry Leggett? I don't know. You know, maybe somebody out there. You know, we may stay in Illinois High School basketball coaching. Uh, we may go to another state and coach, or uh, we may assist at the college level. There's still a lot of possibilities left. I still think I've got something to give to the game, and uh, the game I love. You certainly have, and thanks for everything you've given us over the years. Thank you very much. Jerry Leggett, the head man at Quincy, and now let's go back to Jim Albright. Of course, Quincy will set a school record for taking the most hardware back home 12 times they have finished in the top four in the state finals and now let's take a look at the two schools who are playing for this championship game of course the quincy blue devils a basketball hotbed 26 and 6 this year playing out of the western big six where they didn't even win the conference that's how tough it was rock island of course took that conference having beaten quincy twice on the year as for the tigers of east st louis lincoln the record 21 and 8 coming into tonight the enrollment just under 2,000, and they don't play in a conference, but they play an awful tough schedule, don't yes, they? they do. Yes, they do. We've got some interesting matchups here as you look at the two teams, uh, Jim, with Quincy. Uh, the field goals attempted, of course, uh, they both shoot very well. Quincy's a little bit more disciplined, has a little bit better shooting percentage. Both of them are going to be very good at the free throw line. Those are good percentages. But look at Lincoln's rebounding edge. They're a powerful board team, and that's where... Uh, Quincy's going to have to hold their own to be successful in this third place matchup. And of course, Conzo Martin averages 17 rebounds a game, so he's very much a part of that statistic. Well, to get to the consolation game, you know, it's a strange day because when the day starts, one team will win two, one team will lose two, and two teams will split. Exactly right. And of course, both these teams now coming out for the third place. I think in this contest, you see youngsters finally relax. A lot of the pressure is off. They, they're, they're going for some uh, pride, some honor here, but they're both in the trophy uh, money, as they say, and they're going to play a relaxed game. I think you'll see them have some fun. And a lot of times, adults think that losing a game of that magnitude like this afternoon is a tragedy. Well, when you're young and when you're 16 and 17, tragedies can pass in three or four minutes when they are wins and losses. That's right, and all of them have to be in class at 8.30 probably Monday morning. <laughs> I know if you're coaching them, they will be. <laughs> So it's East St. Louis Lincoln trying to take home the third place trophy ahead of the Quincy Blue Devils who will have their say about it. And right now, let's go to our public address announcer, Steve Adams. Ladies and gentlemen, after the presentation of the colors, we ask you to stand and join our guest soloist, Rick Hoffenberg, a student at Deerfield High School, and sing our national anthem as it is played this evening by the pep band from Jacksonville High School.
As you may have noticed during the pregame warm-ups, Todd Weinhammer was out there warming up, shooting around, but if you also heard Jerry Leggett talk about it, he said he probably would not play much, if at all, this evening. And I'll tell you another thing. Council Martin could very well set this game out. His knee is very troublesome, but I bet you he's out there playing. Let's go now back to Steve Adams for tonight's starting lineup, Steve. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the coaches and players for tonight's third place game in Class AA, featuring the Quincy Blue Devils and the Tigers of East St. Louis Lincoln. First, let's meet Quincy Senior High School, entering this game with a record of 26 and six. The head coach in his 14th season, Jerry Leggett. Assistant coaches, Tom Berry, Gary Hendrick, and Shane Barnes. And now let's meet the players. Number three, a 5'7 junior, Scott Noel. Number 10, a 6'1 senior, Ted Meyer. Correction. Let's go to number 12, a 5'10 junior, Chris O'Connell. Number 14, a 5'10 junior, Mark Conover. Number 22, a 6'2 sophomore, Sean Dean. Number 24, a 6'3 sophomore, Andy Wagoner. Number 34, a 6'2 senior, Todd Wemhainer. Number 40, a 6'2 senior, Kevin Bybee. Number 42, a 6'3 senior, Alan Pasley. Number 52, a 6'5 sophomore, George Millsap. And number 54, a 6'8 sophomore, Tom Lepper. And now, the starting lineup for the Blue Devils. At one forward, a 6'5 senior, 32, Tim Johnson. At the other forward, a 6'1 senior, number five, Derek Banta. At center, a 6'7 senior, number 50, Chris Wilper. At one of the guards, a 5'11 senior, number 20, Lamar Rudd. And now let's meet a 6'1 senior, number 10, Ted Meyer. Those are the Blue Devils of Quincy Senior High School. Thanks, Ted. And now introducing the Tigers of Lincoln High School of East St. Louis, who enter this game with a record of 21 and 8. The head coach in his 18th season, Benny Lewis. Assistant coaches, Jethro Brown and Leland Seabury, Jr. And here are the players, number 12, a 5'5", Jr., Janelle Evans. Number 14, a 5'4", Sr., Gregory Harris. Number 21, a 5'11", Jr., Charles King. Number 25, a 6'3", Sr., Joseph Bolden. Number 32, a 6'3", Jr., Keeson Coney. Number 42, a 6'3", Jr., Kenyatta Hare. Number 43, a 5'11", Sr., Torian Faulkner. Number 44, a 6'4", senior, Rudy Hurt. And number 52, a 6'5", senior, Julian Young. Now, here is the starting lineup. At one forward, 
a 6'6 senior, 22, Hanzo Martin. At the other forward, a 6'4 senior, 23, Chris McKinney. At center, a 6'6 six, six senior, 33, Artegas Williams. At one of the guards, a 5'7 senior, number 10, Stanford Riley. And the other guard is a 5'9 senior, number 11, Maurice Horton. And those are the Tigers of East St. Louis Lincoln. Now, here are your officials for this third place game. Mike Debening of East Alton and Scott Jones of Centralia. Back with the start of the third place game, but let's pause first for this from one of your network sponsors, True Value Hardware. For great personal service and low everyday prices, check the lineup at your neighborhood True Value Hardware store where the March True Value of the Month Extra is the Master Mechanic 13-piece drill bit set. Race through projects with 13 high-speed steel bits, power driven with a slip point that drills on contact. In March, get the Master Mechanic 13-piece drill bit set for just $5.99, where you see the banner at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Biscuit! You'll never make it! Two-minute warning. Couldn't do it, huh? Get a sausage and egg biscuit, biscuits and gravy, or bacon and egg biscuit for just 99 cents at Hardee's. Go for it. in East St. Louis, Lincoln, not all that far apart. And as Coach Mel Rustio mentioned earlier, they have met earlier in the year, so they are very familiar with one another. Here's how we see the starting five for both teams. Council Martin, Chris McKinney, Artegas Williams, and then, of course, Stamper Riley, Maurice Horton, Johnson, Banner, Wilford, Rudd, Meyer for the Quincy Blue Devils. And I'll tell you one thing. That man has his emotions under control tonight because he's going to be back coaching East St. Louis Lincoln. The other coach, Jerry Leggett, hugged his kids when they came out well, after the introduction. Place. And I saw him wiping some moisture from below those peepers, too. No question. It's a very emotional night for Coach Leggett. Uh, controversy around his illustrious 14-year career and controversy even in his departure. Fanta controls the tip and brings it on down. Ted Meyer is starting in place of Todd Wenhamer who, of course, pulled that hamstring this afternoon against Gordon Tech. And we're going to have a good time tonight, aren't we, Coach? Oh, First place in. Oh, they are. They're all relaxed and loose. The pressure's off. And that's, it's kind of like playing basketball out back with nothing on the line. There you right? go. Two three, two three zone by East St. Louis Lincoln. No surprise with their defensive approach. They like that defense. Same atmosphere as when you went behind the garage with your buddy, shot around until Mom called you for dinner. That's pretty much what we got here. You're still going to have about 12,000 people in here, though. <laughs> well, I had a, I had a big, big neighborhood. <laughs> had a, yeah, I had a big family. Quincy in their one two, 2 tipping zone. Riley make that Horton on the jumper from the baseline. Riley's running mate, Maurice Horton, who hasn't scored a lot in this tournament, but that's not his forte. And tonight he gets the first two of the consolation game. You say Louis Lincoln with a token diamond in one zone press, ball back into their 2 3 zone defense. Rudd doesn't want the shot, but Vance it does. That's three. And Banta will have to pick up the outside scoring with the Todd Wienhanger on the bench. Banta averaged right around 15 points a ball game for the Blue Devils this year. Wenheimer was their main gun, 19 points per game. Banta's capable of big numbers, though, Jim. Conzo Martin closing out a spectacular career. How many kids can say they won two state championships? Inside to Williams, and he overshot the hoop. And here comes one of the quickest guards you'll see in a run all the way down. Made it look easy, didn't he? Oh, he just blows by people. People are, uh, you know, are surprised at his explosiveness. He always seems like he's got an extra gear that he can shift into. He's got that Carl Lewis start. Quincy leading it 5-2. 
Horton is hot. Notice a good penetration by Chris McKinney into the seam of the zone, and then he kicked it out to Horton, leaving Horton wide open for the three. Maurice Horton, five, Quincy, five. Number five, Banta, all the way down, finds the glass, and can't get it to fall. Wilbur almost had the rebound. Be it the third place game or championship game, both coaches will coach hard, trying to win this. There's that tip, it was supposed to go back to Johnson, I believe, and it hit the rim. All the way down, Horton, he's trying for his seventh point, but he turned it over on the way down, double dribble. One of Coach Leggett's very special and favorite plays against the zone defense to lob deep to the baseline, causing the defense to think the ball may be even going out of bounds, and then, of course, have that man catch it or tip it back to the person coming up the lane for an easy basket. Chris Wilper out, Tom Lepper in, Johnson up, and that will be a foul on East St. Louis Lincoln. Uh, the reason, of course, that Wilper started this evening is because he is the senior playing in his last game, and that's not unusual for a coach to do that as a reward for all the hard work. Certainly, and he was a starter at the beginning of the year and uh, lost his job a little bit here, shall we say, to the youngster Lepper. The taller kid, much in the case of Griffin uh, with Chicago King, re replacing uh, the Porter youngster. Tim Johnson, who made those big, crucial free throws and that last shot to bring down Bloom last night. As you watch those strong legs of Johnson, you can envision his ability to throw a baseball. McKinney Haynes, not there this time. The rebound comes down to Meyer. On the run is Rudd. Watch him thread it all the way, gets it knocked out of bounds by a very alert Maurice Hort. Yeah, Riley defensively for Lincoln thought that he could just stop and have Rudd uh, pull up his dribble because of his defense being there. But you gotta stay, keep moving with uh, with a guy like Rudd. Alley you pass underneath and now it's coming out of bounds. That one was intended for the sophomore Lepper, but he was cutting for the basket, so Banta found no one at home. Let's see how East St. Louis Lincoln wants to attack this 1-2-2 zone defense if they want to get into the seam of it and attack. These two coaches combined have over 700 wins. Riley misses everything. Good screen out by Meyer. Now, you can tell when you do a good job of screening out when the ball hits the floor, you can still go get it. Here, when you get rebounds off the floor, you've done an excellent job of boxing out. I'll just pass it around the perimeter, wait for somebody to cut like Johnson who travels. There's good defense in there by Lincoln. No one went for the fake of Tim Johnson as he used a little crossover step coming back. The St. Louis was patient and stayed at home on defense. So far in the early going, Quincy has disconnected four times. That's enough for them for usually a half. That's right. McKinney. One on two, couldn't get the shot to fall. Here comes the tip pass. It's a three on two. Fanta in the lane and in the hoop. The St. Louis was uh, caught napping a little bit as, as McKinney penetrated the seam and went down the lane, left no one back on defense, and uh, Quincy got the easy transition basket. So it's Quincy nine and Maurice Horton five now. That's well, the first time Martin's had the ball all night. Cross course it to Riley. Good head fake. Open for the 15-footer. Got it. Tough angle to make the bounce. I think the guards uh, have uh, done an excellent job for St. Louis Lincoln and probably played better than many spectators anticipated. Tom Lepper. He's still growing. 6'8", 205, a young center for Quincy. Bant is wide open for three. Banta has a nice stroke. He's a confident youngster. Good shooter. Derek Benta, as we have said before, there's a long jumper by McKinney. Too much iron. Here comes Rudd. Rudd gets it out, but nobody's going to flag that one down. Who touched it last? It said McKinney did. And in a game like this, you see a lot more chances taken, really. Well, sure. That's the, the, where they're relaxed. Sure. Uh, there's not a lot of difference between third and fourth place. They're going to play the game and have some fun doing it. Good head fake. She gets it blocked, however, by Williams. Artegas Williams had a great quarterfinal game. Watch the special here now, Jim. Out of bounds play under Quincy's basket. There it is. And there it is by Tom Leppard. Pretty big target coming down the gut there, isn't he? 
What you've got to do is screen him out high. You just can't let him pull down in there. I'm sure he's not a senior. Williams turn around. Nice touch. Artegas Williams, the senior, playing his last game for Coach Benny Lewis. As I said, a great quarterfinal game against Elgin, where he had 11 rebounds and 10 points. With 2.30 remaining here in the first quarter, Quincy holds the edge by five. Johnson kicks it out. Rudd with his first shot of the night. McKinney rebounds. Here comes the Tigers. Conzo Martin, that's money time. Looks like he can do that a lot with a Conzo Martin. That's good. It's back to the basket, catching. He's as good as anybody. Leper waits for help. The burden of directing the attack with Wien Hainer on the bench has fallen to the young man, number 10, Myers, out there. Rudd with the pass, but no one really was expecting it at the other end. Banta wasn't in position to get it, so McKinney brings it down. Oh, nice pass to Martin. We've got a one-point ball game. Quincy holding the edge. McKinney showed good poise there and saw the floor very well, delivered a nice pass. Martin averages 25 points a game, 17 rebounds, four block shots. That's a healthy Conzo Martin, and he hasn't been healthy the last couple of weeks. Leper, a little too short, but he follows it, and he will go to the free throw line as Artegas Williams picks up the person. Many people from uh, Quincy think that the Leper youngster will easily go 6'10 by next year, so uh, a diamond in the rough, as they say, for uh, the new head basketball coach of the Blue Devils for 90-91, that being Lauren Wallace. Rudd will check out. Coming in is number 40, Kevin Spivey. You know, Jim is, is uh, maybe as slim as uh, Lincoln is on their bench. And given the fact that their second game in just a few hours, uh, you might look for him to drop that press. It's not very effective against Quincy. It hasn't caused a lot of turnovers out there. Conserve the Conzo Martin this game. Generally, you beat a good press with good passing unless you have that one exceptional dribbler, but even then, time will take its toll, and in the third and fourth quarter, he'll give up a couple. Well, they didn't want it. He's almost daring McKinney to take a shot out there. Now Johnson out on him. But McKinney goes over him, and he's saying Lewis Lincoln has their first lead of the night at 15-14. We don't hear much about McKinney's uh, future after this, but certainly someplace he can make someone a nice basketball player. Breaking the press by getting it to the middle of the floor. The Blue Devils have 40 seconds, and it looks like they'll just spread it around. High post is Leopard. Get some balance here. Look for a special maybe along the baseline for somebody like Banta. Two excellent shooters, perimeter shooters on the floor. And uh, Kevin Bybee and also uh, Derek Banta. Look for a shot with about uh, five seconds to go to give him a rebound shot. There it is. Bybee. Yes, sir. Beat the clock. And that'll be the way the first quarter comes to a close unless McKinney can hit a 40-footer, which he cannot. And Quincy holds the edge by two thanks to Kevin Bybee. Three-pointer. Now this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. What's the other way to beat the evening rush? The other satisfying working lunch. The other way to get into that little black dress. What is this other tempting food for thought? It's the other white meat, none other than pork. These days, it's not unusual to see farmers back in school. This place sure looks a lot smaller. I think you just got a lot bigger. They're learning how to apply crop protection chemicals in the safest ways possible. Remember when the coach made us all do crew tests? <laughs> right before the prom. Some things may have changed since these farmers were in the classroom, but learning to protect the environment is something they know will never go out of style. I suppose you're going to want to borrow my nose again. Brought to you on behalf of the American farmer by the makers of Duo Herbicide. 
Kevin Bivey, the designated shooter at times for Quincy, shows you why. Coming down to the tournament, Coach, he had only taken 80 shots, but nailed 43 of them. Sure, and there was a double screen and the cross-court pass. You flood one side of the floor, throw back to the weak side, and Kevin Bivey nailed the three-pointer to give Quincy the two-point edge going into the second quarter. Maurice Horton will inbound right in front of us. He took a look at one of the monitors as Bivey's shot was being put in, and Maurice was saying to himself, hey, I made a couple of those myself. Where's my highlight? That's right. Three-pointers, Quincy, three for four. Good shooting in this ball game. 60 and 58 percent. We lack athletes. Gordon Tech and Chicago King coming up next. Frank Bassoni ready to bring it to you. McKinney for three. Not there. Tip out past to Mile. Mile will go for open four. And they'll set up the offense out front. Bybee again. He can ring him up, Jim. He's an excellent shooter. He would have been very likely a starter in the lineup had uh, Derek Banta not transferred to Quincy in this his senior year. Bybee is a very fine perimeter shooter. Bybee also a senior. Ranks him in here in his class. Long jumper. I'll tell you, Maurice Horton came out tonight. So I'm going to make my last game at East St. Louis Lincoln a good one. Horton and Riley have had a fine tournament. Eight points now for Maurice Horton. That's his average of the year. Can Bybee do it again, though? Oh, rebound came down to Johnson, but it came down so quickly he wasn't ready for it. Usually when you turn to the basket, that ball hits at an angle and comes for your feet. Almost hit under the basket uh, on, the, on the bottom side of the rim and uh, just caught Johnson by surprise. Quincy up by two, and Conzo Martin trying to take care of that, he does. Leopard trying to come over and give weak side help, and Conzo sensed it and just drop stepped back around and went to the other side of the glass. Again, Conzo Martin is not committed to any college as of yet. Bybee, 15-footer, that's going to be short. Rebound is caught for, Bybee's back, and in. That was miscommunication on East St. Louis Lincoln's part because they had three there for the rebound, but a little over-anxiousness. Artegas Williams with a nice move. Artegas, Artegas Williams showed you some athletic ability there. Took it right to the cup now. Possibly a travel. Well, we've got a good consolation game brewing here. Way outside is Banta. That's all way off the mark. And here comes Riley. Up ahead it comes. Nice lead of McKinney. In this third place game, the officials let him play a little bit, let some things slide, if you will. McKinney now has four on the night. Johnson with a 14-footer. Too hard. Rebounded Leper, taken away by Williams, but not before he drew the personal foul on himself. Gregory Scott, uh, very emphatic with his call there. Gregory Scott Jones from Centralia, the official working the game, along with Mike Devening from the Wood River area. Timeout on the floor. We've got a two-point ball game. Let's pause for these messages. This is Tropicana Pure Premium. No other major brand of juice comes closer to this than Pure Premium. Now this is Tropicana Pure Premium Home Style for those with fond memories of mom's juice. Home Style is filled with juicy bits of real orange, like mom's. So if you like the taste of juicy bits, no other major brand comes closer to this than Pure Premium Home Style. Either way, you just can't pick a better juice. In our business, I think it's a little bit different because we're in competition with our neighbor. You know, he's farming too. Yet if we'll find something that works good for us, we'll tell him, maybe I'll try it. And he'll do the same with us. And yet he's a competitor. And I think you take a lot of businesses, they wouldn't go to their competitor and say, hey, you know, I was able to trim my cost 2% here and increase my profits a little bit. Uh, but yet we'll do that with a neighbor that's a fellow farmer, it's a competitor. All the good East St. Louis teams have one common denominator, that being speed, and you'll see it in action here. Uh, they look up the floor. Riley spots the open man, McKinney, who's beating the defense down the floor and gives him a nice lead pass for the easy two. 
Rebounding wise, Quincy with a big edge in that department, 11 to 5. And you know the fast break is just, it's so conducive to youthful enthusiasm anyway. That's why it's changed the face of basketball because kids love to run up and down. Exactly. The Watch the special here on the inbounds on the Quincy's basket. Pick, pick, pick. Five each. Yeah. You know, the way the scores are going now in high school and college and the pros, everybody looks at the shooters, but the heart and soul of basketball is the pick and the pass. Oh, yeah, you know, the execution, that's it. You know, you can have great shooters, but if you don't execute, you don't get a chance to put it up. But Kenny, is he a great shooter? Yeah, he is. A three. Well, East St. Louis Lincoln up by three. They're still in their token diamond and one press. Really a soft defense in the full court. Now they'll fall back in their 2-3 zone, and Quincy will look to attack. Nice little drop pass into Johnson. That was pretty from out front. Oh, yeah, you can post up on your man inside, and you can get that pass down in there. That's what you want to do. Give the assist to Ted Meyer. One-point ball game. McKinney's warming up. That one's a little too hard. Tip pass to Meyer. He's got a two-on-two. -two, no advantage yet. He'll try to create one, and he is fouled on the way in by Maurice Horton. And the last time down the floor when Quincy uh, pounded the ball inside with the bounce pass, uh, so often coaches will remind their ball players probably 75-80% of your defense inside is keeping the ball from going inside. Once it's in there, it's tough to defend without fouling. Time for another Jerry Leggett special, the pick. This one's going to be way short by Bybee, and Meyer is there for the rebound. We're going to have a whistle and a foul called against East St. Louis Lincoln. Conzo Martin called. Bybee's got, Bybee's got that shooter's mentality. No shyness whatsoever. Well, it's like Will B. Free said one night. It's about three for 22, my favorite quarter of all time. But yeah, they all felt it when they left. That's right. I knew this next one was going. High for the rebound was Williams. Quincy trailed by one. McKinney from about 23. That's a little too hard. Martin had it, lost it as Bantha grabbed it from behind. Pass intended for Johnson, saved by Bybee in the corner. Got four minutes remaining here in the first half, and a good ball game. Both teams nice and loose. Wilper, number 50, back in there now. Two guards for East St. Louis Lincoln. They'll bother you. They'll, they'll bug you out front. Nice shot attempt by Bannon out there. Johnson's there. He was under too far and couldn't find the glass. Plus, he's doing a good job on their offensive board, getting many second and third chances. Maurice Horton. Too hard. Meyer with a tall rebound out front. And it's a three on two. Bounce pass. Root contact out front. Nothing caught. Shot won't fall. Martin with a rebound. East St. Louis Lincoln tried to draw the charge unsuccessfully, but they didn't get burned on the layup. East St. Louis Lincoln needs to get into a little bit more of a patient offense, uh, not shoot so quickly. Uh, Quincy's got the ball most of the time during this ballgame. That'll be fairly hard to drill into their head in the third place game, you know. Because again, you're... A guy like Conzo Martin doing all the rebounding is going to drill it into his teammate's head. He wants a chance to catch the ball once in a while inside. Out front, long jumper, Riley short on that one. Chris Wilfer with a rebound, and Quincy with the basketball trying to take the lead. Trail by one. Suppose you were a guard on Lincoln's team. Could Conzo Martin get your attention at halftime? Oh, yes, he very well could. And it wouldn't need to come be a carrier pigeon, either. <laughs> a lot of picks inside, and Johnson says, I'll try to find the glass. Johnson's a little bit better shooter, I think, than uh, he even believes he is. He's hesitant oftentimes when he gets beyond uh, 12, 13 feet, but the big guy's got a nice touch. Johnson, who averaged 10 a ball game for the Blue Devils, who came in tonight with a record of 26 and 6. Martin with a nice drop pass inside to McKinney. What made, that play, what made that play successful is McKinney flashing from behind the zone across the lane and getting in there and catching the ball before uh, Quincy could react. Conzo had that ball way above his head. He just dropped it down in there in a hurry. Bybee will look inside. Johnson's there. Good head, Faye. Count those two. He throws his man 
And again, you know, you don't, you don't see a lot of teams ball fake all the time and fake the pass and move the head, but if you do it consistently enough, somebody's going to bite once in a while. Well, the best defensive ball players react, and they react to the first move. Uh, that what they have to do is counter react to the fake. Ball game moving by in a hurry. Only a minute 20 left. McKinney, he shows why. Is that going to be a charge? Will they take it away from him? Yes, they will. No basket. But McKinney showing that penetration, and he was able to do that against King today, too. Unfortunately for East St. Louis Lincoln, they, they didn't have the horses to stay with King, and he was the only guy being able to penetrate. Even then, he couldn't find Martin. Time out on the floor. East St. Louis Lincoln trails Quincy by one. Now this from one of your network sponsors, Country Company. When my dad died, it was a shock going through all this stuff. I mean, I, I'm sure he knew what everything was, but to me, it was complete chaos. At least for all our insurance, he dealt with one agent and took care of everything. Country companies. It's nice to know when it matters most. The country is behind you. I guess we're all gonna die sometime. My dad just didn't think it would be so soon. Which spread tastes more like real butter? My shed spread country crop, right? Parquet. Parquet? A national taste test proved it. Hmm. Parquet spread does taste more like real butter than shit. No wonder you're so quiet. Parquet. Yeah. Heinz ketchup. It's so rich. So thick. Why waste time with anything else? Heinz ketchup. The best things come to those who wait. The Tigers trying to win their 22nd game of the year, which would be about Benny Lewis's average, and of course McKinney has had a lot to do with those wins. Uh, McKinney's trying to drive here. He gets a little help, a uh, little help defense on the weak side from Quincy. Uh, and the charge is uh, called against Chris McKinney. The basket is nullified. So far, Bybee has come off the Quincy bench to score 10 points. McKinney with nine. And that's the replacement for Todd Wiemhainer, who is out with the injured leg. Most players very likely won't play in this game, unless it's a token appearance towards the end of it. Yeah, if you've never pulled a hamstring, believe me, oh, folks. Mercy. Man-to-man -man defense right now by Lincoln v. St. Louis. Now they'll look to really have a lot of specials run, a lot of set plays, a lot of picks. Banta baseline. In and out. Tip up and in. Tim Johnson. When you play a man-to-man -man defense, you better check out and box out your man to keep that from happening against you. That second and third effort, that rebound basket. I may have said that East St. Louis Lincoln was leading when we left, but it was just the other way around by a point. Throwing it up and getting it to fall is Maurice Horton. And he'll be able to tie this ball game as Horton now has hit double figures on the day with 10. There's a key thing right there, Jim. When he comes across here and he's fouled and he's kind of stumbling as he's fouled, it's, you know, it, it's always important to go ahead and put the ball up, throw it up. It may count if it goes, and that's just exactly what happened there. Whereas gravity's a wonderful thing, isn't it? I really that's like right. it. Three point, old fashioned three point play. If it wasn't for gravity, we'd probably be doing this game from the top of the assembly hall. 32 32. What a ball game here with 32 seconds remaining in the consolation game and the tension building for that Gordon Tech Chicago King game. King trying to become the first undefeated team to take the state championship since the Quincy Blue Devils in 1981. Notice the defense of Conzo Martin on the big sophomore Leper. Leper caught the ball off 20 feet away and Martin just stayed inside knowing full well he wasn't a threat out there. And doing that, he clogs up the lane. That's where they want it. Five, he's got it. Five seconds remaining. Lincoln better hurry. Williams takes his time. Two seconds. One second. Will they get it off? Yeah, it'll count. Ooh, short. It was on line, but just a little short. Quincy leads it at the intermission. 34-32. We're back after this from one of your network sponsors, True Value Hardware. In these days of self-serve gas stations, computerized banking, and understaffed stores, it seems that no one has the time for personal service anymore. Well, at True Value Hardware Stores, we haven't forgotten that we're working for you. And whenever you have a question or a problem with the do-it-yourself project, we'll do our very best to help. So the next time someone wonders where personal service has gone, you tell them it's still hard at work. Right in here. So make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. 
sure you boys will be all right. Yeah. Oh, ah, the virtues of milk. Milk helps supply protein for strong muscles, phosphorus for good hand-eye coordination. He's wide open, but it's picked off. Calcium for strong bones. And it's an end around. What a play! It's all over! Holy And finally, who won the game? They did to boost your morale. No, it does a body good. Welcome back to Assembly Hall. People still filing in, but of course a very good crowd here because the Quincy Blue Devils have a legion of money. A sea of blue up there, and the Quincy Blue Devils have their way so far in the consolation game. 34-32, of course, Jerry Leggett would like to go out a winner, and that being a winner at Quincy, no one knows where he will go after that. An entertaining first half. Oh, very much so. The ball players are relaxed on both sides. Kevin Bybee's got a nice starting job tonight in place of Todd Weemaner, and he's uh, answered the bell handsomely with about 12 points. Both ball clubs relaxed and doing a nice job. Uh, surprisingly, Quincy's doing an excellent job on the offensive board. If you have not yet seen Jamie Brandon play, if you're a University of Illinois fan, and you're wondering what to expect, in the coming years well that'll be on tap coming up in just a little bit and also you want to take a look at tom klein schmidt he doesn't look like a man who would light this place up but believe me every time he steps on the floor he does just that for gordon tech again the score at the half here in the third place game quincy leads it 34 to 32 quincy trying to finish at 27 and 6 and east st louis lincoln trying to finish at 22 and 8. we're coming back with our halftime guest art kimball is standing by but first let us pause for these messages when looking for the best buys stop by used but nice office furniture check out our top quality pre-owned office furniture there are desks and chairs as far as the eye can see and more filing cabinets than anyone can believe plus tables in every shape and size imaginable browse through three full floors of merchandise and get the best deal on quality name brand merchandise and used with nice office furniture 812 southwest washington peoria Particularly picky people do everything for picture-perfect soybeans. You pick at lamb's quarters and pesky pigweed and get pretty punchy, crawling velvet meat. But now you can tank mix new pinnacle herbicide. It's extra punch, pounds problem weeds to a pump. New DuPont pinnacle, the post picky people pick. Our guest is Dr. David Turner, a member of the IHSA Board of Directors, the principal at Petersburg Board of High School. Dave, always good to see you. Thank you, Art. Nice to be here. A lot of things we could talk about, but I know you're a member of the National Federation Board of Directors, which governs all the high school activities. Correct. And uh, can you give us maybe just a real brief summation of exactly what the National Federation is? Well, the National Federation is made up of uh, representatives of the 50 states plus Canada and the uh, Philippines, Guam, and a few other countries around the world that uh, subscribe to the uh, rules of the play that uh, the National Federation puts forth and they set the rules for all of the games and uh, uh, do several other things to promote high school sports throughout the uh, United so, States. So like the rules or don't like it, the National Federation's worth that, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> That's they not really the grammar, is it? <laughs> talk, talking to a schoolman. David, let me ask you this. I know that right now the National Federation is concerned with uh, this. Uh, maybe it's old hat, but this plain old sportsmanship. Yes, sir. We uh, started an initiative this year uh, to look at sportsmanship and the way that crowds are controlled, the way coaches react, the way that players react. And it's a joint effort uh, between uh, the NCAA, uh, most of the professional sports uh, associations. For example, the first meeting that we had uh, was held at the headquarters of the National Basketball okay. Association in New York City. And uh, trying to uh, promote the idea that those things filter down from the professional oh, sports yeah, that yeah. people see on television to what high school students do and the way high school crowds react and just uh, try to promote uh, good conduct and good sportsmanship among teams. How are we doing on the high school level nationwide for what you've heard? Uh, well, to be honest, 
honest about it, it was a concern, and that's the, real, the reason we yeah. started this initiative. Yeah. But we put out some publications that were sent to all schools this year and uh, have really kind of seen a little bit of a turnaround, and we're, we're, we're pleased with what we've seen. Well, it's a good thing, certainly, to be focusing on, Dave. We ran out of time so quickly, and I wish we could talk more about this, but I guess the reminder is you go to a sports event, remember, sportsmanship is still the reason we have them, one of the big reasons. That's true. Dave, thank you so much. Thank you, Art. Dr. David Turner, the principal of Petersburg Porta High School, member of the IHSA board and uh, the National Federation of Board of Directors. Let's pause for this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. What's the other reason for chopsticks? The other light, late night bite. Just in a minute, hey. The other fast family favorite. The other romance and candlelight. What is this other tempting food for thought? It's the other white meat, none other than pork. There are a lot of fish in the sea, and a lot of restaurants trying to lure you in. But Hardy's may have the best lure of all. Their fisherman's fillet sandwich, and for a limited time, new crispy fish dippers with tangy dipping sauce, both made from 100% North Atlantic cod. Deep down, you know how good they really are. And now for the real hook. Only a dollar ninety-nine buys a fisherman's fillet sandwich and regular fries. Only at Hardee's. It might be very interesting to be in the Quincy locker room because of the fact that Jerry Leggett is coaching his last game as the Blue Devil headmaster to see exactly what's being said in there. I wonder how much of it is strategy and how much of it is purely emotion and, hey, let's go out and play our last game together. Well, I think there's some motivation there uh, with the uh, the fact that it is Jerry Leggett's last ball game as the uh, head man at Quincy. And there's seven youngsters that are in their last game uh, for Quincy. Uh, seniors who will no longer wear their uh, blue and white colors. Very proud tradition at Quincy High School, and they want to go out a winner. Of course, this is Coach Mel Rustio of Jacksonville wearing the, he's got his green on, and of course I'm green with envy because I can't shoot like Jamie Brandon can. It's about two and a half minutes before we get back to this action here in the third place game, and here is what has transpired on the floor thus far. Good shooting for both sides, as you can tell, 58% for East St. Louis Lincoln, but Quincy getting four more shots off. Free throws really haven't been a factor, uh, rebounding. There's your factor. Quincy is out rebounded East St. Louis Lincoln by seven. And the offensive boards have been uh, have been owned tonight by Quincy. They've been getting second and third attempts, and that's uh, the difference in the ball game thus far. And usually Quincy does create a lot of turnovers when their defense is clicking, but that has not been the case tonight. Just one. Uh, Bybee, filling in for Wemhainer, has hit 12 points, hit a couple of long three-pointers in there. Johnson with 10, and also Mr. Banta with eight as far as the scoring for East St. Louis Lincoln is concerned. Hello, Morris Horton is in town. He has gotten 11 points tonight, and McKinney with nine, and Martin with six. Now let's take time out for one of your network sponsors, Country Companies. Making it to the final game uh, has taught me a lot about teamwork. Uh, I don't think we'd have been in that final game if we hadn't played together so well as a team. Playing in the IHSA tournament will stick with me the rest of my life. Keith Mashoff, guard for Nashville's 1978 Class A championship team and his fellow country company's agents salute the players in this week's tournament. I wish everyone would be able to experience it for themselves. A truck you can live with, America. A truck you can work with, America. A truck you can play with, America. A truck you can stay with, America. No, it's not just a truck, it's a GMC truck. It's not just a truck anymore. Take a test drive in Bloomington, Canton, El Paso, Morton, Peoria, Pontiac, and Winona. I don't know why, but every time Quincy comes down here and plays the last game of the quarterfinals, they seem to put together a memory maker. They did it a couple of years back, and then they did it again last night against Chicago Heights Bloom and their fine player, Brandon Cole, by coming back from a late deficit, getting a couple of buckets in the final minute, sealing it with a free throw. And they just seem to do that in the last couple of minutes. When you talk about memory makers, both teams are long in that suit. Uh, gee, when you think about the 
three years run here with uh, Lincoln v. St. Louis being the defending champion and state champion and some of the outstanding heroics of a year ago to do that and Quincy is history. These two fine basketball programs that represent their communities and schools quite well. Yeah, when you think about the Tigers, of course, in a championship game, you go back to that matchup between Eric Anderson of St. Francis de Sales and, of course, LaFonzo Ellis. LaFonzo really hasn't lived up to his billing or his potential early in the tournament, but on that given night, he certainly did and powered his Tigers to a state championship. We're set to go here for the final 16 minutes of basketball for these two teams this year. Out front, Rudd with a pass, and Johnson could not control it after Banta tipped it around. Oh, great pass over to Mark. Excellent look away pass. Maurice Horton with the eye popper. The St. Louis Lincoln has gone back to their diamond and one token press at three quarters court, and they'll fall back into their 2-3 zone defense. Banta wears number five. That's Johnson back to Banta now, and that's Rudd in the middle of Johnson who walked with the basketball. You know, when, when you have the uh, athletic ability of a, of a Conzo Martin and the size, you can allow a person sometimes to catch the ball in the lane and then be the intimidator, and that's exactly what he was at that point in time, and uh, Tim Johnson traveled as a result of it. McKenney looks for Martin. He's right there. Rupper seemed to be frozen, as it were. Uh, they're, they're looking for Conzo a little bit better. I don't think you'd want them to look for Conzo as often as possible. Martin now with 10 in this constellation game. And East St. Louis Lincoln with the lead again. We've seesawed back and forth all night. Rudd to Bybee. That situation that just flooded the uh, strong side of the floor and rotated Bybee through right after another youngster. Got the easy two. Drive by McKenney and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, they don't have Bybee's number up there on the uh, scoreboard, so apparently they're not going to post his numbers. Uh, we'll keep the folks abreast of that. He's having a heck of a game tonight. Unofficially 14, I believe. No, Chris McKinney goes to the basket with the ball as well as anybody in the tournament. He's very aggressive with the basketball. Well, he has no fear of anyone. I mean, you know, he went in against Chicago King like, well, they're just another team. Now, granted, he didn't deal on him too often, but he went in there anyway. Turn around by Williams. That's what you call a little trajectory. Yeah, he got a little uh, high rainbow there. He got the fall. Well, you know, talk about uh, fearless. Uh, Chris McKinney plays so hard and uh, doesn't smile too often. He's kind of intimidator out there. Quincy trailing by two. It's caught Bybee down low. And one thing that Quincy does well besides pass and pick, they use the glass real well. Oh, they really do. They shoot the ball high off the glass and soft off, off the glass. That comes, Jim, from drilling and drilling and drilling. Speaking of drilling, Horton has been, but not this time. There's the tip and go, filling the lane. A run behind the back, finds itself free, can't get it to fall. Back to run, spin, up, wait, count. Key thing there is the little man, Rudd, did not try to fade and get his shot off. He used a couple of pump fakes, got the man out of position, and took it right up to the glass. There's Williams again. This one's going to be off the mark, and here comes Bybee and company. Quickly to the man who should have it, Rudd. Johnson, can he beat McKinney? He was fouled on the play. He's got some mitts on him, doesn't he? Yes, he does. You know, this is the thing that when you, when you talk about attacking the basket, watch the, watch the lane field here by Quincy. Tim Johnson really hustles to get out to the outside, to the right of Lamar Rudd. He takes it, takes it in strong. You know, when you attack the basket, that's what you have to do, attack it. You can't be timid, you can't draw off. You've got to go there with determination, go there with some fearlessness. Well, basketball is basically one of those anything you can do, I can do better games. If you have the God-given talent, and even if you don't, you see a lot of players in high school who work hard enough to be good players, and they fit into a team concept. That's the beauty of basketball. It's not an individual game. I think that's the beauty of the Quincy Ball Club this particular year. You know, they don't have the super outstanding Division One player. Conzo gets a block from behind, but Johnson also got a piece of the arm. And one thing about Martin, one of the many great things about him is his demeanor. He rarely ever, ever gets out of himself. Well, the good ball players stay within themselves, both in terms of the abilities they have and also their emotions. Horton with a long baseball pass there. And 
Johnson trying to catch up. You know, you can't stress that enough to young kids that want to play basketball. You have to stay within the things you can do physically on the floor, and you have to stay within your emotions if you're going to be successful. Conso just one of two, and with the rebound, it's Leper. And, you know, I, I can name several players you see a lot down in your area of the state, and I, I had the uh, pleasure of watching Rock Island play a lot this year. And Chris Allison, you know, God didn't, didn't wave a magic wand over that kid's head and say, hey, you're going to be a great defensive player and you're going to dish out lots of assists. He just taught himself. He stuck with it. You're talking about a young man that played for Duncan Reed, 5'8", 5'9", who was the most valuable player in a tournament at the beginning of the year where he only scored 16 points in some three or four games. But it's the intangibles that you can do that can make a team go, and Chris Allison does those things. You don't have to be a big, uh, gifted person. Nice pass down to Johnson. He hangs in the air, and somebody almost got the tip in. I think Leper got a hand up there, but Quincy sees their two-point lead in jeopardy as East St. Louis Lincoln comes down in a hurry. Some of the Quincy fans upstairs making some noise. Now they went traveling on Chris McKinney there. Riley from way outside. That's not going to do it. Tip every time to Rudd at the free throw line. Rudd spin 360. What a shot. Rudd can do some things in the open court, and he just showed his versatility and his uh, athletic ability. 43-39, as you just saw. And now the emotions will start swelling up inside the consciousness of Jerry Leggett because he's going to start realizing that this indeed is it for Quincy. Conzo Martin brings this team back to within two as he goes up against the sophomore. I mean, I don't care who the sophomore is. Martin against the sophomore is almost unfair. Uh, that's true. He, you know, he's so poised and uh, so knowledgeable inside with the basketball. And he's looking to finish off the old-fashioned three. The successful shot, and now the free throw attempt. You know, you talk about uh, the emotions. Uh, certainly, those are going to swell, and uh, within the uh, Quincy fans, uh, within their ball players, within the East St. Louis uh, fans and their ball players, are seeing some uh, young men leave the floor for the last time. Martin now with 14, and I love what Benny Lewis had to say before this game started. He said, hey, I told my team before we came out here, every good thing comes to an end. Unless, of course, you got a good marriage, right, Joe? There you go. Now, well, this is a delayed attitude that Quincy's going to get into, but it's against a man-to-man. -man. If they match up here, they're going to start, and you see a lot of rotation through the middle. Quincy making some noise. Banner in the lane, and we have got a five-second count of closely guarded. That's a situation where if you're closely guarded, that's usually within six feet by the defender, and you're dribbling, you have five seconds, you got to get rid of the ball. Or if you're not dribbling and closely guarded, you got to get rid of it in five or lose possession. Council Martin is six of six from the floor. His team trails by one, and they'll be looking for Martin as he loses the handle and who's got it. For our listeners and viewers' sake, uh, the wave is going, and that's why folks are excited. Uh, a little audience participation. Don't you do it. Right here on Champagne Beach, eh? Don't you do it. <laughs> but I want to. I want to. You know, knock your uh, earphones off. Well, you know, to me, uh, the wave is not a participation sport, but that's just what I do. <laughs> And now we've got, amidst the noise, we've got a player coming in, number 42, Alan Paisley. I'll tell you what, in Class 2A action, it's good to see the auditorium nearly filled in the last couple of days and uh, some fun being had by all. Yeah, that's a great shot. Alan Paisley, number 42, in for Quincy. We've got three minutes, just a little bit more than that, left here in the third quarter, and a great consolation game. Good defense by Quincy, almost picking it off in Phantom. McKinney may make him pay for that. He's fouled on the way up. He'll give his Tigers the lead if he can make two. Remember today, McKinney, 10 of 10 from the free throw line? That's right. Came in uh, as a suspect free throw shooter and really righted his uh, stats from that particular uh, uh, area. And again, it's a Chris on a dressy. Driving, penetrating, slashing Chris McKinney that he finds himself at the free throw line. It seems to me he's moved even further to the right at the free throw line. Gotta be careful, he'll be shooting it from his bench. The first free throw shooter that ever made an impact on my 
young mind was a guy named Hal Greer from Philadelphia because he used to take, in effect, jump shots from the free throw. Yeah, sometimes you'll see a young that kind of struggles with his free throw. Uh, that's a good jump shooter. We'll do that at the free throw line. Well, whatever McKinney has done has worked because he is nailing them today. We've got a timeout on the floor. Three minutes left in the third quarter. Let's pause for these messages. March it to Davina's for big savings by Davina's custom order sale. Save 25 to 40 percent on all flex steel sofas, sleepers, chairs, recliners, and sectionals. Choose from over a thousand beautiful fabrics. Ravina has specialized in custom ordering for over 18 years. Let Ravina guide you to a beautiful room that you'll enjoy for years to come. Plus, save 25 to 40 percent on all Richardson dining room and bedroom suites. 90 days same as cash. The savings are yours on flex steel and Richardson at Davina's Fine Furniture on Sheridan and Glen. We don't stock just a few Marillac cabinets. We carry the largest selection of Marillac in central Illinois. Choose light, medium, or dark oak, beautiful cherry, or European. All with pull-out shelves at no additional charge. When you want quality, choose Marillac. When you want the best selection, see us. And price? Go ahead. Compare. Because when it comes to cabinets, nobody beats Hamptons. Nobody even comes close. Hamptons, the best for less. Every, every day. Are you ready for some noise on a St. Paddy's Day? That's the computerized fanometer here. And during the Class A tournament, that thing was a hit because all the folks here at Assembly Hall got into it. And I think they might start doing it now. Let's give a listen. Fun at the indoor ball yard. Lagan is trying to figure out what's going on. I think he's just got the clue. I think I think he thought Adolph Rupp's ghost just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> East St. Louis Lincoln, as you can tell by the scoring leaders, giving help to that one-point lead. 1-3-1 one -one zone by East St. Louis Lincoln. Banta can't get it. Good rebound by Fivey, and he gets it to fall. He's having a nice ball game to bow out and close out his senior year. And yeah, that's tough. It's tough to be that sixth or seventh guy when you've got somebody good in front of you. And you know you can play for almost any other team. It's nice to see it happen to the young man. Uh, unfortunate that Todd Weenhainer had the accident or the injury. But Kevin Bybee, who has stayed true to the colors, uh, gets a chance here. And his driving is Riley. Nice pass to Williams. He'll get it to fall, and Bybee will pick up the personal foul. Williams, it looked to me like he could have gotten to the glass quicker, but he angled back to the lane and ended up trying for the old three fashions. The good guard penetrated and looked to dump off. And that's exactly what Riley did there. He penetrated, picked up the defender that was hanging around, Artegas Williams, and when that happened, he shoveled the pass off. Nice assist to Williams. The old-fashioned three. Oh, won't go. Williams couldn't believe it. I tell you, that horse, oh, bad pass out front. McKinney against Bybee, great body control. Excellent body control. Caught up with it, hung in the air, and dropped it through. East St. Louis Lincoln up by three now. 1-3-1 one, one zone defense by Lincoln. At the high post is Wilper, wearing number 50 for Quincy. Blue Devils taking their sweet old time. Cutting through his Bybee against Martin. That's an awful tough shot. Got the soft high arch, and when you do that, you get the ball off and times to hang up there and give it a chance. 20 points now for Kevin Bybee. Riley lost it in close, and Quincy picks it up. Now he was going to the well again to play that penetration and dump off that Quincy's defense. Stop it. Under a minute left in the third quarter. Back to a 2-3 zone. Way out front is Banner. Derek Banner gives Quincy the 50-48 lead. Lincoln may hold here for one shot. Inside 35 seconds. 
trailing by two. Gordon Tech and King coming up next. Inside the Kazo Martin who leans in, gets his own rebound and score. The Kazo Martin has had the ability to move defense away because he's always leaning to the basket. Followed up with his own missed shot. He's got a tie ball game here, Jim. Rudd well, needs some help. Uh-oh, out of bounds. We'll go the other way. Just a bad pass oh. by Kevin. He knows it. He threw it off of Rudd's foot. Five seconds, four seconds. They'll get it over to McKinney. That's a 28-footer. It won't go. Rebound Quincy. That's the way the third quarter comes to a close. It can't get any better than this. We're tied at 50. Let's pause for this one of your network sponsors, True Value Hardware. For great personal service and low everyday prices, check the lineup at your neighborhood True Value Hardware store, where the March True Value of the Month is this Allenite 30-piece screwdriver bit set. It includes six different types of tips, plus a magnetized driver, socket adapter, and a handy carrying case. In March, the Allenite screwdriver bit set is just $5.99, where you see the banner at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. I've got some important news you ought to know about. This man is a federal inspector. Kroger has brought him in to inspect every shipment of fresh seafood we buy. The shrimp, salmon, everything in our seafood department. We're not doing it because it's required. We're doing it because we want our seafood to be the best for you. Federally inspected seafood. Who else but Kroger would go this far? And there's our Quincy cam, of course. Not ours, but somebody from the Blue Devils, of course, taking memories. Marty, you know, what a, what a world we live in now. You can, yeah, you can record your own history, although in my case, I only like half of it on film, thank you. 50-50 is our score. We've got a great game going on here. It's the way it started, uh, all tied up, and here we are going down to the end. We are the second half field goals. Well, Quincy's uh, shooting, shooting extremely well. East St. Louis coming alive. Stay pretty consistent there with their shooting. Quincy 7 of 10. East St. Louis Lincoln 7 of 12. You know when you relax, Jim, you shoot the ball better. Oh, sure, you can take the pressure off. Third place game was shooting it very well. I hear you do everything better when you relax. Is that true? Right. Less stress, better results. Quincy in the 1 2 2 tipping zone. They'll look to tip it out if it's, it's a missed shot. You see Liz Lincoln showing some patience. Riley and Horton just playing a little catch. Martin comes out. He may get the ball up high. Now he's going to cut down. They're looking for him a little bit more. They're looking for him. Now the story of this third place game has been Kevin Bivey with 20 points. There's Martin. Triple team. It worked that time, but I bet it doesn't this time. Uh, again, he, you know, he follows his shot so well. And the missed shot, if you don't block him out, he's going to go to the board and get his missed shot and put it back in. And that's what he's done the last two times down the floor. Martin with 18. McKinney with 13. Horton with 11. Three Tigers in double figures. Long jumper out front. Bobby couldn't get that one to fall. Tip is controlled, however, by Rudd, who gets in the lane. He has to go up with it. Off-angled shot, Martin with a rebound. You say, let's show patience the last time down the floor. Who did they do this time? Long jumper, Hort. And he looks at the bench well, after he makes it, looks at his face and says, hey, man, no problem. Nothing to it. 55-50 as East St. Louis Lincoln scores the three and then the deuce before that by Martin to break the tie and foul from behind. East St. Louis is off and running with that goal for a day. Well, they've got a foul to give here, so uh, East St. Louis Lincoln is in the bonus at this point in time with 6-12 to go in the ball game. Quincy is not. They'll be inbounding the sideline. Look for one of the specials that they may run with a lob. Check out Banta here now. Check out Banta. Jump pass again. That's Banta, just like Coach said. And that's the result. 
All right, Coach, you're going to have to get that playbook back to Jerry when his game is done. You just got to, you've got to scout that, and you've got to stop that. You know, they're going to they're gonna beat you in many ways. You don't want to let them beat you in the ways they want to on uh, when the clock is dead on set things. Paul McKinney penetrates, makes a nice pass to Conzo Martin. That's what you call playing together for a long period of time. Both players knew exactly where the other was going to be. Conzo's got 20 points because his teammates are looking for him and penetrating and looking for him. Leffer looking for the ball. Now they give it to Johnson. They have to kick it right back out. The football will go to the baseline and then kick back, tip back to the Leffer youngster. They're going to run this box offense. Losing it on the way up was Barron. The other way. Ooh, great defensive play by Rudd. McKinney was open and would have had the layup. Rudd now has a three on two hang, but doesn't hit it. Gets his own rebound, however. Look at that pass. Yeah, over the now, yeah, back in again. All that, you, all that happened because of Lamar Rudd's uh, intensity and his alertness. You know, Lamar can't get after the game, you know, somebody might say, hey, I got 18, and Lamar's like, yeah, but I had 14 assists. Mm -hmm. Long jumper, not there by Riley. And Quincy has a chance to tie it up with a three. However, Ty Wernhainer, their big three-point expert, is not in this ball game because of that pulled hamstring which occurred in the third quarter of the Gordon Tech game and seemed to turn the tide against Quincy in four. Gordon Tech. Johnson goes hard to the hole and gets a strip by Martin. Last touch by East St. Louis Lincoln. Number five and number 40, uh, Kevin Bybee and uh, Derek Bamba can hit that three, though. Now we look here at uh, Quincy inbounding under their basket as Bamba goes out of the ball game and Myers comes back in. Look for a lob here quickly. See, St. Louis Lincoln was not ready. They were ready only because he had to come back down and take the shot. But had he been able to get it when he was there for him, they would have just been watching like us. That's a timing play. It's just a quick end. As soon as it's handed to the, from the official to the player, he's just passing immediately. Looking for Martin, posted low. As you see Johnson come over and help out right away, he's, he's got to be there to help out because Lepper can't guard him one-on-one. -on -one. The Taylors might want to milk a little time, uh, Jim. They've got the lead. They, they're in the bonus. It's under uh, 350. Uh, they may want to just bring him out just a little bit, be a little patient. Nice pass over to Williams, but Lepper made a change of shot. He got it back. Lepper tips it out to Rush. Oh, Rush just sprints through. Rudd brings the crowd of Quincy supporters to its feet because he has that athletic, exciting skill. You know, there's rarely overtimes in consolation games. Have you noticed that? Good. Let's decide it in no extra innings. No, they, I think they said that uh, Stanford Riley stepped on the end line. Costly turnover here at the 312 mark. One point separates them. Kevin Bybee heads out with those 20 points. Banta back in for the Blue Devils. And St. Louis Lincoln in a man-to-man -man defense. Double high post to Quincy. Driving is Meyer. Quincy has the lead at 58-57. What a game. Should Quincy get the ball back with this lead, you can bet they'll pull East St. Louis out and start milking the clock. 245 remains in this third place affair. Quincy trapping now, trying to get the turnover. To Martin. Credit that one to little Stanford Riley. Quincy back. Trailing again by one. They have to look for the offense now. And they're still not in the bonus, uh, Jim. Anzo Martin with 22. What a player he is. On the run was Meyer. And Martin owns it. Two minute mark. One point lead. If you're East St. Louis Lincoln, you've got and you're in the bonus, you've got to be thinking, spread the floor, take some ticks off the clock, possibly go to the free throw line. Martin with eight rebounds on the game to go along with his 22 points. Pass down to Martin. He has to hustle after it, but it cannot be saved because Johnson has it. Sure, Benny, Benny Lewis didn't want that. 
Ivy with 20. And as I said, Martin with 22. And what will the call be? A foul out front. That's think, not exactly what Benny Lewis wanted. No, but they've got it to give yet. I don't know. That doesn't, uh, they're still not in the bonus. So they'll be inbounding at the sideline. I say that only because oh, if you get a foul yeah, later on, oh, you yeah. might want to give it away. Then time out on the floor. Now this, from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Port Producers. What's the other way to beat the evening rush? The other's satisfied working lunch. Also a good meal. The other way to get into that little black dress. What is this other tempting food for thought? It's the other white meat, none other than pork. For about two million dollars, you can get a lawnmower built like a John Deere. Or one as powerful for around a hundred thousand dollars. Or some things that trim like a deer for about eight thousand. But why would you do that when for less than $2,000 you can get a genuine John Deere? The John Deere STX. Nothing runs like a deer. Hi there, laddies. We hope you're enjoying this third place game on the IHSA television network. That's no leprechaun unless they're getting bigger on me. <laughs> Here comes the Quincy fast break. This is the one, I believe, where Rudd just keeps Tip on out. coming. Watch him split the scene. That's right. He comes back now into his, to the left, comes around, uses a rather unorthodox uh, Use the right, use the right hand instead right of the hand. left. Well, sideline, they're trailing by one. Many coaches are just happy to get it in and work for something. Coach Leggett may go immediately looking to score. There's the, There's the play, but it wasn't there as... Horton jumped out to stop it. Banta now to Bybee, who's back in the ball game. The two three-point shooters in there, and Banta and, By and Bybee. This is where the Quincy patience pays off. Oh, they're going to be patient. They, uh, you know, they, they've got possession of the ball. They're not waiting for the last shot, but they're going to get a good one. High post, and here we go. Rudd. Bybee, open, short, rebound, pounds them up. East St. Louis is in the bonus. 50 seconds left. They want to take care of the ball, Jim. How many times has Conzo Martin been there for East St. Louis Lincoln when they needed him for the big play? Uh, he's, you know, he's a money ball player. And, and teams that get here uh, have those types of players. Todd Lehmhainer uh, for Quincy. Conzo uh, Martin for East St. Louis Lincoln. Uh, Tom Kleinschmidt that we're going to see in the championship game. Uh, Jamie Brandon, the list goes on and on and on. Not a lot of free throw tosses here tonight. Only 14 in total. And Quincy has come up a little bit shy in that department. Missed free throw. Here come the Blue Devils again, just like last night. Those are big ones there. That's going to put this game in a tough situation for uh, Quincy. All the Quincy fans are on their feet. Could Coach Leggett go out with a last-second shot for a victory? It wouldn't be unusual. But East St. Louis Lincoln and their fans hoping it doesn't fall. They're going to have to take a shot, Coach, with at least Gotta eight be. or seven seconds left because they want to try for the rebound if it doesn't go. Might be one shot only. Timeout. Timeout Time out on the floor. Don't go away. We're pausing for these messages. It's time to trade in your old built-in appliance. Wall oven, cooktop, dishwasher, and disposal. It's time to enjoy a beautiful Maytag wall oven and Maytag cooktop. It's time to have a Maytag dishwasher and disposer work for you. Benson can install for you and will give you service excellence. You even get a free five-year limited warranty on parts and labor, only at Benson. You even get time to pay, and the price is right. At Benson's Maytag, pleasing you pleases us. Peoria demands the bottom line. SNK Chevrolet delivers. Yes, till 8 p.m. Wednesday. Our bottom line price will be on the windshield of every new car and truck. And just $4.99 down delivers. We intend to sell 85 Chevys in just four days. It means low prices, low payments, like Metro, just $129 a month. S10 pickup, just $144 a month. Even Cavalier, below $155 a month. Bottom line, you save big. At just $4.99 down delivers. Only to Wednesday night. Only at SNK Chevrolet. Don't miss it. Well, 
it all comes down to the final 11 ticks of the clock here in the consolation game. Quincy with the basketball, and that's going to scare you for Benny Lewis because of all those specials they run from the out-of-bounds. Well, and Quincy doesn't need the three-pointer to win. They just need an old-fashioned uh, two, shall we say, or even to get fouled in this situation. So I would think uh, you'd look for something that's uh, inside for, for uh, Quincy to take it to them, to take it to their defense. What type of defense will Benny Lewis come out in? Will he come out man-to-man, -man, or will he come out and just kind of match up with them in the zone? Well, both teams have plenty of timeouts left, so if Quincy does score, he's St. Louis Lincoln. We'll call the timeout quickly. It's Banna. He lost it on the way up, but he's fouled by Chris McKinney. And the one and one will be in effect. I remember what I said about that foul out front a couple of seconds right. ago? Yeah, he had it to give. They're not in the bonus. They're not in the bonus, are they? No, you're correct. I read it incorrectly. They have one. Hang, that's the last one they have to get. Hang the guilty team. And that's, that's why McKinney probably said, hey, I'll take the gamble. That's right. They had the foul to give. Quincy was not in the bonus. So it's the lob to Leper coming over. They get it inside to Johnson. He lost it back to Well. Four seconds. Timeout. He's St. Louis Lincoln. Don't go away. We've got time for a shot. Now this for one of your network sponsors, Country Company. I lent my car to my brother, and he demolished it. Two years old, didn't have a scratch. Funny, about a month before my agent had recommended this extra keeper coverage, $21 more a year, I remember thinking, well, I probably don't need it, but if you think so, it turns out they gave me a brand new car. This year's model. Country companies. It's nice to know when it matters most. The country is behind you. I guess it's just a matter of trust. The American farmer takes on a lot of tough jobs every day. He does everything he can to produce a good crop. And he does everything in his power to preserve our delicate environment, such as terracing his fields to control runoff and erosion, so that families like his can continue farming for generations to come. Brought to you on behalf of the American farmer by the makers of Dual Herbicide. The inbounds play actually didn't work. They had to go to Tim Johnson, who lost the handle, but look at Rudd. He stepped right back in, picked up the loose ball. Yeah, he's had a, you know, he's had an outstanding game. Uh, rightly so, if he should wear the hero's mantle here. Rudd just stepped in. The ball was actually kicked off of uh, Johnson's own foot. Martin with the defense there. Chance. And again, now both teams are officially in the bonus situation. And we have four seconds remaining. I'm surprised to see McKinney down here. I don't think they want him down there. I think they want Martin down there and McKinney up here with the ball. Benny Lewis may want another timeout. That's exactly what's going to transpire. So. Benny Lewis wants to talk it over again. Or does he? Now he's talking with the official. Well, there's some confusion here on the part of Lincoln. by the official, so he has to wait. Well, here we go. Quite a finish, and it's only for third. Wait till the first place game. Williams will inbound. They're going to pass it up ahead to McKinney. He's going to have time to get it off. It's good! They do it time and time again, and they did it one more time for Benny Lewis. They had time to get it off, and just like Vincent Jackson, and just like Mr. Ford, and all the shots they made last year in the closing seconds, down it went, and up went Benny Lewis, and down went the Quincy Blue Devils, and you won't find a better third place consolation game, nor a better show of sportsmanship between those two gentlemen, McKinney and Jerry Leggett. He goes out a loser, but Loser is not a label he will wear for long. My question would be, when do you take the poll and question the audience, do you enjoy a third place game? If you took it now, it might be a different story, Frank. <laughs> they ran it to perfection. Williams inbounded it to Stanford Riley. His job was to get it up court and look for McKinney. Let's take a look at it one more time. 
by pushing it up the floor. He's got 4.9 seconds, and McKinney spears the ball right there, and a desperation shot off balance. Puts her home. That's all she wrote, Jim. From where McKinney stopped and from where he let the shot go, that was five feet. That's right. And you know what? That's a, the toughest shot in the game of basketball, that baseline shot fading out of bounds. A difficult shot, but a great athlete and a great shooter put it home. Well, Terry Leggett's last day as the Quincy Blue Devil coach ends on a rather unusual note for him, having lost both games here today. But again, the injury to Todd Wimhainer. Did not help matters at all. Duncan Reed, the coach of the Rock Island Rocks, is standing by, and he's commenting about the game, and I'm sure we'll get his thoughts, but what a third-place game. 61-60, to 60, McKinney lit it up. That was his 14th and 15th points of the game, and Benny Lewis, as he has done so many times here at the Hall, walks off the floor a winner. He's had some unbelievable shots made by his uh, ball players uh, to capture uh, titles and to put his team over the hump, and this was a great one. And maybe the most amazing thing of all is that Benny's hair is not totally gray yet. Oh, it's not. No, it's not at all. We're going to break away the first this from the IHSA. Two point, two point field goal. Point field goal by... Jackson lets fly. Goal! Jackson won the game! Price is driving away. The ball is stolen by Smedley. He shoots. He scores! Barton launches the jumper. No good. Rebound down. Bowman says, tip it to me. Cobb tips it. Grab by Smith. He shoots. He hits it. The game is over. Morgan Clark has won it. It's March Madness. Now, relive the incredible history of the Illinois High School Basketball Tournament on one fabulous cassette. Meet the great players and coaches. See the unforgettable teams, the powerhouses, and the sentimental favorites. The wild finishes, the classic thrillers. March Madness, now yours. Just send check or money order for $32.95 to this address or call toll-free 1-800-621-0660. That's 1-800-621-0660. Major credit cards accepted. Order now. Shrimp and fish lovers, Weaver's Farm is going to tempt your taste buds. Try Weaver's Peel and Eat Fresh Shrimp. Enjoy 50 fresh shelled shrimp for only $7.99. Or get a shrimp dinner for just $2.99. Just peel and eat. Or try Peoria's favorite catfish dinner for just $4.29 only at Weaver's Farm. Impasses. Rules change. Laws change. And today's complex problems demand a whole new set of solutions. Injured? Get a good lawyer. A new breed of lawyer. Get, Get Gontos. 672-1441, no fee charge till you collect. Victory number 396 in Benny Lewis's career may not be as biggest, but it's going to be a memory. Well, you know, Riley got the ball down the floor, and it was uh, caught very uh, athletically by... Uh, Oh, gee, what a shot by Chris McKinney. And McKinney is fading out of bounds, and that's a toughest shot. Ask any basketball player, that's the toughest shot in the game on that baseline, and he, he puts it home for a winner in the third-place game. And there's been some exciting, as we talked before, there's some exciting games for that man right there and for Jerry Leggett, too. Penny Lewis and company finished the year at 22-8. and eight. Quincy will leave the Assembly Hall with the fourth-place trophy. That is the second in Jerry Leggett's 14-year regime. Also a first, a second, and a third. They will leave the hall with a record of 26 and 7. In a few minutes, the floor will be taken over. As I speak, the floor is taken over by Gordon Tech. They have lost but one game all year, and that was a long time ago, earlier in the season. And, of course, Chicago King, 31-0, trying to win the state championship with an unblemished record to become the first team to do that since 1981 when a guy named Jerry Leggett and the Blue Devils did it. Certainly, and, of course, King is going for it all. You know, they've been denied with some great talent down here. And, of course, tonight they want to get the whole thing. They've been the uh, public school champions for a couple of years, but they want to capture this state championship, Jim. Everybody forgets about that shot Rudd made about five seconds earlier, but uh, that was a good shot as well. Final stats here today. Free throws really didn't come into play all that much. The rebounds heavily in favor of Quincy, 30-18, but still East St. Louis Lincoln able to rebound with that last second memory maker by Chris McKinney. Man, I'm telling you, that's what's great about March Madness. You'll see him fall from all the angles. Now, speak
championship title game has to be played. You've got two great offensive ball players. They're both creators. Tom Kleinschmidt for Garden Tech creates. Jamie Brandon creates for King. Let's take a look now, if we can, at some of the facts about these two schools. Garden Tech, vocational, 3,892 boys from the Chicago Catholic League. So we have the Catholic League, 30 and 1 against the Public League in our title game tonight in Chicago on St. Patrick's Day has a party at the Assembly Hall. There are the Jaguars. They're unbeaten. The black and gold. They got here by beating Westinghouse in that public league title game, then on West Aurora, and then Lincoln, East St. Louis. Teams look like this on the comparisons. Coach, anything there? Pretty even all the way around, really, when you look at uh, King uh, has that uh, impressive 63% uh, field goal shooting. But a lot of that, uh, Frank, is because they get a lot of easy shots with such a powerful inside ball club. But other than that, it's a pretty even matchup. You wonder if Jamie Brandon will be the, the guy that gets most of the shots again for King or whether Gordon Tech will try to focus on him defensively. Well, Jamie Brandon owns the baseline. He's a, he's a versatile ball player. He's inside, he's outside, he's everywhere for Chicago King. Makes things happen for that ball club. Tom Kleinschmidt uh, is his counterpart, of course. And, you know, look at the one comparison you can talk about is both Brandon and Kleinschmidt play both inside and out. And here's another example of Brandon at his best in the transition. Well, I think that's it. You know, they're, they're both uh, versatile ball players. They, they both can make things happen for themselves and for their teammates. And they have the respect of their teammates. They're the clutch ball players. They're the players that play at the top peak performance in crunch time. Is he going to be Mr. Basketball? And there's a, is there a future Mr. Basketball? Well, certainly you could make a great case for that, a future Mr. Basketball, since Tom Kleinschmidt is yet but, uh, but a junior. And he's so composed. You did an opportunity to chat with him a little bit during that third place game. He was dressed and ready to go midway through the third place game. You know, that's an amazing thing. I went down at halftime, was standing in the tunnel, came up, and here I look up, and he's standing next to me in full uniform, talking about the game that's going on, and he's ready to play, and it's uh, an hour before the game. But calm. Boys, very much so. Very much so. It's really going to be an exciting title game, and it's time to meet the players. Here's our public address announcer, Steve Adams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the coaches and players for tonight's Class AA State Championship game featuring the Rams of Chicago Garden Tech and the Jaguars of Chicago King. First, introducing Gordon Tech High School of Chicago, entering this game with a record of 30 and one. The head coach in his fifth season, Steve Pappas. <laughs> Assistant coaches, Merle Seatkin and Al Stasiak. And now let's meet the players, number four, a 5'4 senior, Mark Jurasic. Number 10, a 5'5 five, five junior, James Abaldo. Number 12, a 5'11 junior, Dan Hernandez. Number 20, a 5'11 junior, Arthur Malson. Number 24, a six foot junior, Arthur Stewart. Number 32, a 6'3 junior, Jareem Anderson. Number 40, a 6'4 junior, Scott Gurner. Number 50, a 6'6 senior, Kevin Powers. Number 52, a 6'4 senior, Anthony McGowan. And number 54, a 6'5 junior, Bernard Hopson. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for the Rams of Gordon Tech. At one forward, a 6'5 junior, 34, Tom Kleinschmidt. The other forward is a 6'4 junior, number 30, Antoine Gillespie. At center, a 6'5 senior, 42, Keith Starr. 
One of the guards is the 6'1 junior, number 14, Jason Bay. And the other guard is the 6'2 senior, 22, Brian Allen. And those are the Rams of Chicago Gordon Tech. And now introducing the Jaguars of King High School of Chicago, who enter this game with a record of 31 and 0. The head coach in his ninth season, Landon Cox. Assistant coach, Benny Parrott. And now the players for King, number 11, a 5'10 freshman, Michael Irvin. Number 12, a 5'10 senior, Mark Winters. Number 15, a 5'10 sophomore, Anthony King. Number 21, a 6'6 freshman, Kaim Cunningham. Number 22, a 6'3 freshman, Gerard Billingsley. Number 24, a 6'6 senior, Anton Little. Number 25, a 6'3 junior, Noah Meller. Number 30, a 6'9 freshman, Thomas Hamilton. Number 31, a 6'10 senior, Damian Porter. Number 32, a 6'6 junior, Sylvester Ware. Now for King's starting lineup at one forward, a 6'7 senior, number 20, Johnny Selby. At the other forward, a 6'4 senior, 23, Jamie Brandon. At center, a 6'11 freshman, 54, Richard Griffith. At one of the guards, a 6'3 senior, number 13, Ahmed Sharif. And at the other guard, a 5'10 senior, number 10, Fred Schofield. Those are the Jaguars of King High School of Chicago. And now introducing the officials for tonight's championship game. Jim Lapatina of Addison and Bo Paprocki of Arlington Heights. The championship game is next. Now this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. What's the other reason? for chopsticks. The other light, late night bite. Just in a minute, hey. The other fast family favorite. The other romance and candlelight. What is this other tempting food for thought? It's the other white meat, none other than pork. It's time to trade in your old building appliance, wall oven, cooktop, dishwasher, and disposal. It's time you enjoy a beautiful GE wall oven and GE cooktop. It's time to have a GE dishwasher and disposer work for you. Benson's can install for you, and we'll give you service excellence. You even get a free five-year limited warranty on parts and labor, only at Benson's. You even get time to pay, and the price is right. At Benson's GE, pleasing you pleases us. The championship trophy will go north. It will be to the Public League or the Catholic League. And there you see the field of the Elite Eight. The keys to this game tonight, Coach? Gordon Tech has to control the board. Got to shoot well from the outside. If the ball game ends up to be a transition game, ends up to be a board game, King's going to be there. They got to stop. King has to stop the perimeter shooting and the creation of a Tom Feinschmidt. Gordon Tech wears the orange.